All right, Shalom. I'm going to start off by giving all praises and glory and honor to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Racha Kodash. I want to get done on the star apostles and elders get millstone who rule well in peace, love, and sight to the hopeful like this world. And this is the brother Zakaria coming again with another lesson. Through the Racha Kodash, um, on um, the end is nigh. You know, so Lord, where this lesson is edifying, I'm going to jump right into it. This is a. Uh, this is Romans chapter thirteen, in verse eleven. It says, "And that knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than we believe." You know, it says, "And and that knowing the time, how do we know the time through the um the spirit and power of Yahweh Hashem Yahushai." Through this knowledge and wisdom that we have. It says, and that knowing the time, right through the precepts, through the prophecies, we we know the times. It says that now it is high time to wake out of sleep, right from that dead state, from that slumber we was in. It says, for now is our salvation nearer than we believe because we've seen the prophecies pop off the page. We've seen how much closer we are to the end, you know. It said, the night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Of light. Like it says in Ephesians chapter 6, you know, when you read into it, we got to put on the whole armor of Yahweh Hashem Yahushai so that we can stand against the wiles of the devil, so that we can stand, you know, before our Lord and Savior. You know, daily, because we, 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 we're closer to the end than before and we seeing it we seeing what this um what this devil is doing throughout the earth but um i'm gonna grab this this is revelation chapter 12 in verse 10 it says and i heard like and I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength in the kingdom of our power, of Yahweh, and the power of Mashiach. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our power day and night. And that's what this devil do. You know, he's going to be cast down. The Lord said he's going to bring him down. He exalted himself as the eagle, but the Lord is going to bring him down, like it says in Obadiah. The one that's in rulership. The scripture said that the earth is given into the hands of the wicked. He said he covered the face of the judge thereof. If not, where and who is he? Uh, verse 11, it says, And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb. And that's what we're praying to do, to overcome this devil through our Lord. It's saying, By the word of their testimony, and they love not their lives unto death. You know, the scripture said that we die daily. You know, and, and we know that some of us are going to be put to death. We read in, um, I believe, Revelation 20. And it says, it's, uh, some of us, that, we, that, we, that they would be headed for the name and the witness of Yahweh, Hashem Yahweh Shai. You know, some of us are going to taste death. Verse 12, it says, Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. Right? We have to re we rejoice. Because we seeing the fall of this devil. We seeing that it's, that his time is short. I'm going to continue to read. It says, For the devil has come down unto you having great wrath, because he knoweth that he had that he that he had but a short time. You know, this devil knows that he had but a short time. His time is almost up. It's a trading of places. Because it's you grab this. This is Rock chapter 10 and verse 8. It says, Because of unrighteous dealings, injuries, and riches got by deceit, the kingdom is translated from one people to another. And we win it and we seeing that. Because of unrighteous dealings and riches got by deceit, the kingdom is translated from one people to another. And we seeing a transitioning of the kingdoms now. <laughs> Because we ushering in the kingdom of, of Yasharallah, the kingdom of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, while we're prophesying against this wicked kingdom, 
that is going down because two kingdoms can't stand. One have to fall in order for the other to come into come into play, and we seeing that this place got to go down in order for righteousness to dwell, in order for the kingdom of heaven to, to be put and set on this earth. Because the scriptures also says says this. This is Second Ezra chapter four and verse twenty nine. And say, but as I mean, verse twenty-eight. But as concerning the things whereof thou asking me, I will tell thee, for the evil is sown, but the destruction thereof is not yet come, because it's still prophecies that have to be fulfilled before that ultimate destruction. Verse twenty-nine. If therefore that which is sown be not turned upside down, and if the place where the evil is sown pass not away, then cannot it come that is sown with good. So this place gotta be. It gotta go in order for good to come. The evil have to be put out. It got to be put out. It's going to be quenched. It's a truth. It's going to flourish. Corruption shall be overcome. You understand? The truth that have been so long with our food shall be declared. And it's being declared now through the prophets that the Lord have set up. So the good is on the way. It, it's nigh. The end is nigh for the evil to be put out, for it to be quenched. But I want to grab this in 2nd Ezra chapter 9. This is 2nd Ezra chapter 9 and verse 1. It says, He answered me then and said, Measured out a time diligently in itself. And we're measuring the times through the prophecies, through the signs. It says, And when thou seest part of the signs past, right, which is tokens, signs is another word for tokens. It says, Which I have told thee before, then shalt thou understand that it's the very same time wherein the highest we begin to visit the world which he made. And we've seen the Lord visit this earth through the natural disasters, through the signs of heaven, through the chariot sightings, the blood moons. We've seen the Lord visiting this place and he's, he's going to visit this place physically. When our Lord returns, it says, verse 3, Therefore, when there shall be seen earthquakes and uproars of the people in the world, we're seeing that now, you know, just coming into this to this um new year it, um it, we get we, we get um <clears throat> i had got hit with an earthquake and there's been earthquakes throughout this <laughs> throughout this year already man and you seeing the upwards of the people you seeing nation against nation verse 4 then shall thou well understand that the most high spake of those things from the days that were before thee even from the beginning right the scripture say declaring the end from the beginning Verse 5, for like as all that is made in the world had a beginning and an end, and the end is manifest. So we see the end being manifest through the prophecies of the scriptures. Verse 6, even so the times also of the highest have plain beginnings and wonder and powerful works and endings and effects and signs. We see in that once again. <laughs> it is happening. Verse 7, and everyone that shall be saved. And shall be able to escape by his works and by faith. So when works and faith are synonymous, you got to have both. Whereby you have believed. It says, verse 8, shall be preserved from the said perils and shall see my salvation in my land and within my borders. For I have sanctified them for me from the beginning. And that's what we're praying and hoping to be, man. To be sanctified. To be sanctified of Yahweh Shema Shai from the beginning. Being chosen from the beginning, the chosen of the chosen, because all of Israel is not of Israel, only a remnant is going to be delivered. But verse 7, I'm going to jump back up and saying, Everyone that shall be saved and shall be able to escape by his works and by faith, whereby ye have believed. You know, say, He that endured to the end, the same shall be saved. And we pray to endure to the end to be delivered, to be protected. From these calamities, from this destruction. I want to grab this as well. This is um Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 8, and verse 8. It says, If a man desire much experience, she nor things of old and conjure it aright what is to come. It's going into wisdom. She knoweth the sub subtitles of speeches 
and can expound dark sentences, right? That's through this do this wisdom. We able to do this. We able to understand these dark parables of the scriptures, these dark sentences of the scriptures. She foresees signs and wonders in the in the events of seasons and times. We seeing those signs and wonders in the events of seasons and times, man. We seeing it throughout the earth. Showing us that the end is nigh, that we're very close to the Lord making his second coming. This is Second Ezra chapter 6 and verse 9. It said, For Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that follow it. And that's our beginning when this devil go down. Going well, jumping back to that um Revelation 12 and 12. Because Esau Edom is the so-called white man. Physical counterpart. His end is our beginning. His end is our beginning. So we're waiting on the Lord to take this devil out of power. This is um St. Luke chapter 21. In verse 28. It says, and when these things began to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads for your redemption draw it nigh. Our redemption draw it nigh. When we look up, it says, when these things began to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads for your redemption draw it nigh. Our salvation draw it nigh because the Lord is near. Our salvation is nearer than what we believe. You know, <clears throat> but I want to jump up to um, verse 10. It says, then said he unto them, nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. We saying that it is divided. It can't stand. We saying that throughout the earth. Verse 11, a great earthquake shall be in diverse places. That's happening and famines and pestilence that's happening and fearful sights. And great signs shall there be from heaven. We seeing that once again through the blood moons, the chariots that do people equally call UFOs. So, uh, but a lot of chariot sightings. We seeing those signs. We seeing these things take place on earth, showing us how the end is nigh at hand. But this is Job. I'm going to end it here. This is Job chapter 14. And verse 4, it says, Who can bring a clean thing out of an unclean, not one? Seeing his days are determined, the number of his months are with thee. Thou hast appointed his bounds that he cannot pass. You know, going into this um, Esau Edom. He got bounds that he cannot pass. You can't bring a clean thing out of an unclean. You can't change this devil, man. He's not going to change. He can't, can't get right. So he got to be taken out of the way. This devil got to be taken out of the way. And he got bounds that he cannot pass. He knows that he had but a short time. His sins, the scriptures say that the, um, her sins are reached unto the heavens and the most I remember her iniquities. So the Lord is getting ready to judge this place Babylon, a.k.a. America. So the end is near. The end is nigh. And we have to prepare. We have to make ourselves ready. So uh, let me grab this side into here. Uh, no, it's not a... Let me see. It's a lock here. Yep, this is... um. Second Peter chapter three and verse ten. But the day of Yahweh Shemah was shy will come as a thief in the night in the heavens, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat, going into that nu those nu nuclear missiles. And also the chariots, the laser beams from the chariots as well. Because the Lord said he's gonna come with his chariots and his fire like a whirlwind to win his anger and his flames rebuke. Roughly paraphrasing. It says, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat, and the earth also, and the works that, that are therein shall be burned up. 
Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of person are ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? You know, when you go into the word conversation, it goes into our conduct, our matter of life. How are we going to be moving? Knowing that these things are going to be dissolved. Striving to please the Lord to the best of our ability. Our ability. Verse 12, looking for and hastening unto the coming of the day of the Most High, wherein the heavens being, being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for a, for a new heavens and a new earth, where we endure the righteousness. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace without spot and blameless. And that's how we want to be, man, without spot and blameless. Looking for such things, being be diligent that ye may be found of him. And we got to stay diligent. And so I'll give, you know, I'll make it, um, our calling and election sure. So that we could be delivered from these things. That's why we look for a new heaven and a new earth when we're into the righteousness because we want that good to come so that evil could be put out for good. And we are near it. We're near the end of the evil. You know, so Lord, with us, lessons edifying. I'm going to give all praises and glory and honor to Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai Bahasham, Racha Kodash. I'm going to get double honest to our apostles and elders, get millstone who do well, and peace, love, and sight, says to the whole collective Israel. Shalom, Kwame Ashrallah.